Here we have a system of three masses connected through a series of uh, springs and dampers following this arrangement. We are looking for the equation of motions of masses M1, 2, and 3. Again, the first step is to create the block diagram of each mass. I have here all three masses, and given that in the diagram here we see that the force is pulling mass M3 to the right, I'm assuming that all masses will move to the right. I'm calling the displacement of mass 1, M1, mass 2, X2, and mass 3, X3. Let's start now adding the uh, forces to this diagram. Again, we have to assume a direction for positive and negative forces. And let's assume that everything that moves to the right is positive and all forces that act towards the right are also positive. Let's start with mass M3. At mass M3, we have the input force F of T that is being applied to mass M3. And we have two resistive forces, one due to the that spring and the other one due to the damper that connects M3 and M2. And both forces are opposing the acceleration of the mass, and thus they act to the left. The first, the first force here is very easy to calculate. We have a spring, and the spring is connected to a fixed frame. It is not connected to M2. So the relative, the absolute displacement of Spring x3, uh, spring k3 is simply x3. On the other end, is fixed. It doesn't move. So the force that resists motion here is k x3. See, k in this exercise doesn't have an index, so we're assuming that all k's are the same. There is also another force due to that damper that connects m3 and m2. And as we learned, the force in a damper is proportional to the speed of both ends of that damper, the relative speed on both ends of that damper. On this end of the damper, we have x3 dot, which is the speed of mass m3. And on the other side of the damper, we have the speed of mass m2, which is x2 dot. So assuming again that mass 3 moves more than mass 2, we can assume that the speed x3 will be higher than the speed x2 dot. We can now write the force as the coefficient of viscous friction of that damper B times the relative or the difference in the speeds between M2 and M3. So Mx3 dot, where dot is the first derivative of displacement with respect to time, minus x2 dot. Right. Again, this is the relative speed between them. If they move at the same speed, then the damper provides no force because this is zero. Right. And if 2m2 is fixed, then x2 dot would be zero in that case, and it would have b times x3 dot. Now let's move on to m2. m2 is connected to the same damper. So as you saw before, they are connected, so this force, due to the damper here, needs to be the same force that pulls M2 to the right. We have a force here, and this will be B, X3 dot minus X2 dot, which is the force, again, due to the damper. If M2 moves to the right, it is M2 is connected to M1 through a spring. So now there is another force acting on M2, that holds it back, and that force is due to the spring K, and the magnitude of that force is the stiffness times the relative compression or uh, stretch of that spring. In this case, it would be the displacement of mass M2 and the displacement minus the displacement of mass M1. So X2 minus X1. If you now go to mass M1, it is clear that the force that it pulls on M1 
to the right is the same as the one that acts on M2 in this direction. So this force here will be the same as that one, K x2 minus x1. And finally, there is a, another force acting on M1 because M1 is fixed to a fixed reference through a spring. So the force due to that spring is simply K times x1. Okay, now something interesting to notice here, something rather obvious is that these forces are the same. Okay, now that we have all the block diagram, all the uh, free body diagrams, we can write the equation of motion for each mass. Starting with mass m1, we have the sum of forces equals to the mass times acceleration of mass m1. According to our convention, forces going to the right are positive, so we have k times x2 minus x1 minus k1 x1 equals to m1 x1 double dot. If you factor this out, now we have k times x1 minus kx1, negative here, negative there. We have two, negative 2k1x1 two plus kx2. And if you move everything to the right, we can rearrange this expression as plus 2kx1 uh, minus kx2 equals to zero. So here is the equation for mass one. For mass two, we have the sum of forces equals to m2 x2 dot, double dot, x2 double dot. So forces, we have two, we have a positive and a negative force, b times x3 dot minus x2 dot. This again is the speed. This is the coefficient of viscous friction. Right, not to be mixed with dry friction. There's nothing to do with dry friction. Minus that force equals to acceleration of mass 2 times its mass. Right, and again, following the same convention, we can rearrange this m2 x2 double dot plus k x2 minus x1 minus b x3 dot minus x2 dot equals to zero. So here is the equation for the second mass. And finally, mass 3. The sum of forces equals to m3 x3 dot, and the sum of forces in that case we have f of t minus b x3 dot minus mx2 dot minus k x3 equals to m3 x3 double dot. In rearranging this equation, we have M3x3 double dot. Let's simply move these two items to the other side, plus B x3 dot minus x2 dot plus kx3 equals to f of t. Uh, so again, we've, we keep f of t separate because this is a, not an, an external input to the system. This is the main source of force being applied externally to the system. And here is now the equation for M3, right? 